Okay, very good afternoon from sunny London, ladies and gents. A very warm welcome to all the attendees on this session, which will focus on the reopening of the hospitality industry, discussing on some of the latest data on how the industry has bounced back from COVID-19 crisis. My name is Nitin Radhakrishnan, joining from La Colombe, London. Although the crisis is getting managed in some parts of the world and continued uncertainty with the travel sector, there's a huge optimism in the food and beverage areas. To discuss more on a global level with regards to how the industry is shaping with regards to business models, the talent pool, the hiring trends, and the skills which are needed for the prospective job seekers, we are pleased to have a very special international panel in collaboration with HOSCO. Please note that for all attendees joining in, we'll be putting aside a Q&A time with our panelists towards the end of the session. Please feel free to send your messages in the chat function. Without further ado, we are pleased to welcome Zara al Yusuf, Talent Acquisition Manager for Jumeirah Group, joining from Dubai, Dusty Guzman, Global HR Director for Zuma, Oblix Roca, joining him from Florida, and joining from Paris is Ragnar Fredriksson, Managing Director of the World Association of Chef Societies, World Chefs, and also from Paris, Fabrice Tessier, the Vice President Vice President, School Relations and Partnership for ECHO Group. Moderating along with me and representing HOSCO and joining from Barcelona is Sandra Fentes, Senior Marco Manager. A very good afternoon, all of you, if, with this esteemed panel. And to start off this discussion, would I kindly request you to briefly introduce yourself and the establishment and the role you represent. Thank you. I'll start off with Sarah. Thank you very much, Nathan, for the introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zahra Al Yusuf, um, and I'm uh, from Jumera Group. I've been with the company for about nine years, working in various roles within HR, and finally, in the interim, heading the talent acquisition globally within uh, Jumera Group. I am based here in uh, lovely, sunny Dubai, um, and it's very nice to be here with everyone today. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, Dusty, if I may ask you to start off. Sure, my name is Dusty Guzman. I am the head of global human resources for Azumi Group. We operate Zuma, Raqqa, uh, Oblix, Incognito, and Itaru in seven countries, soon to be 13 countries in the next three years. Um, I have been doing HR for, or in the hospitality industry for over 30 years. I started as a as a waiter in a restaurant eons ago and 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 have um, been able to really move my career forward within human resources and training and development great thank you very much indeed let's see uh ragna yes uh good uh, good afternoon everyone uh, pleasure to to be here and uh, and good day from from paris uh, finally finally sunny paris and a special day as well because uh, restaurants are opening Finally, so we are we are a little bit behind the rest of you, but thank you. Great news. We're, we're very very happy with that. So I am the managing director of the World Association of Chefs, so uh, uh, a federation that that uh, unites chef associations in 110 countries, and I've been the, uh, the managing director for the last uh, 10 or 11 years now. Uh, me too. I come from hospitality. I started 18 year old, so I've been more than 30 years in hospitality, uh, hotel and catering school, and hotel management school and uh, hotel management and, and different 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 roles in, in within hospitality uh, front office and and, uh, and the restaurants uh, communications and so all my life has been around hospitality so I'm really uh, always very happy to uh, to be uh, surrounded by colleagues it's just a special special people and uh, so I'm happy to be here thank you thank you Ragnar and finally uh Fabrice, uh, amazing mass yes. you have. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm not a uh, vampire anymore. So just uh, eager to uh, to join you again, eager to uh, uh, to have yes, opportunities for you guys yes, uh, in a short while and uh, in the various uh, uh, openings and positions in uh, ACO Group. So I'm a VP School Relations for uh, ACO since quite a few years as I have a, a career in uh, HR, 
in Asia, in uh, Pacific Islands, and uh, in different uh, parts of uh, of the world and of ACO. Uh, today I'm in Geneva, but usually I'm in uh, I'm in Paris, and uh, we are yes, uh, uh, we'll be happy to meet you in London. I hope soon and uh, in different places uh, lively because yes. Uh, it's good, yes, to, to discuss, yes, on, uh, <laughs> and uh, to have a webinar, but uh, still, to meet you is better. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Is Thank it you. sunny in Geneva? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Is it sunny in Geneva? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I close the curtain for the light, huh? but uh, it's sunny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Fabrice. Okay. Uh, my fellow uh, collaborator, Sandra. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Sandra Fuentes. I'm joining. I'm joining you for sunny Barcelona. It seems like it's sunny all over the world. Great news. Um, and uh, I'm the senior PR and market manager at Hosco. Uh, my career started working for PR agencies for other hospitality companies as the PR and communication manager. And at Hosco, which I'm sure many of you, most of you, are very familiar with, we are a network specialized, a professional network specializing in the hospitality industry where we have 1.5 million members, professionals, uh, talent from the hospitality industry who are part of the platform, more than 7,000 employers and more than 400 uh, hospitality schools like the Cordon Bleu who are part of, of our platform. Um, in a short, I will, I know, now you want to show, we have a video, right, right now? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing my notes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for that stellar introduction. Very inspiring. And uh, before we proceed, I'd like to show you a brief video of Codumbla London. If you're not familiar with what we do here, and after which I'll uh, ask Sandra to present a report depicting the industry data on recruitment. In the meantime, I'll just streamline a small video here. Anybody can come to the Cordon Bleu. As long as you have the passion and the dedication, you'll do well. And that's why we said that the Cordon Bleu, give us a passion, we will teach you the rest. On that note, uh, if I can ask Sandra to take over the, the, the rest of the discussion, with, especially yeah. with the hospitality policy. So I have some numbers to show you. I hope not to, to, to bore anyone. Hopefully this is interesting for you. As I mentioned, so uh, I'm representing Hosco, especially uh, a network specialized in the hospitality industry. I know most of you who, you are, who are joining us today are either a uh, student of the Cordon Bleu or an alumni of the Cordon Bleu. So hopefully you're already part of your school community of our network and you're taking advantage of either looking for the job of your dream, networking with your peers, of course, or finding courses, free courses about, for example, leadership skills that you would like to acquire. Um, at Hosco, we combine three different audiences and the, the three pillars of the hospitality industry, which is, of course, you as talent. We have schools like the Cardinal Blue, and then we have employers. So we're trying to unite these three pillars together. Um, last year, when the pandemic started back in March, we started thinking, what can we do to help the industry, to help talent, to help everyone uh, who are part of Hosco and outside of the platform as well, to be better prepared for where things get better, which is something we are thing right now with, for example, France opening restaurants, not only terraces, but also indoors, Dubai almost to, to full back speed. And of course the US where the vaccination is running very fast also, uh, also with restaurants opened um, all over the country. Um, and so one of the initiatives was to survey our employers from, the, from Asia to the Americas, and of course in EMEA about the recruitment predictions and recruitment predictions, which also um, for us, it reflects their sentiment about re the recovery of the industry. So I'll show you what we have. The, the latest survey we conducted was back in April, so very recent, it was published in May, so we're talking about quite fresh data. We conduct this survey every quarter, so that way we get a, a better, let's say, grasp of what's going on and what the, the next few months will be for recruitment. So. Show you a presentation. Let's see, wait, this is starting. Okay, so I just mentioned. Okay, so this, this, as I mentioned, this, this survey, uh, we asked employers, uh, so well over the world. The first question that we had for them was, when do you plan to or expect to hire again from interns to full time to part time seasonal? 
um, seasonal employees. And one of the questions or one of the answers we gave them um, this opportunity uh, in the last survey was to let us know actually in that precise moment, so we're talking about in April, how many of them were currently hiring to have more accurate data. And we got a nice surprise. We got 28% of them said that they were currently hiring. And for us, that shows that they were starting to get ready for the summer season, which so far, hopefully crossing our fingers, it looks quite promising for everyone around the world. And uh, and you will see this 28 or close to 30% will repeat in the next couple of slides that I have, and I'll, I'll explain what the correlation is here. And so, um, but anyway, the restuffing peak is expected to accelerate from Q3 onwards when we have close to, and, and it might be hard for you to see the numbers and to, and to make, uh, to sum them, but close to about 50% of them said that they will be actively hiring. Um, what we can see, and in the next slide, I'll, um, and, and this is first match with, the, say, that the 30%, 32% of them uh, have an optimistic prediction about maintaining uh, their high end, about, uh, sorry, have, okay, sorry, wait a minute, some, something was bothering me, distracting me. So 32% have an optimistic prediction about maintaining their hiring plans for the next vacation season. Once again, we see a match between 28% that said that they're already hiding to 32% that are positively thinking about the future and maintaining their staffy plans. And when do they expect to reach normal headcount? We're talking about the fully operational um, uh, companies when before, before the COVID, so having a regular team size. And so here, 56% uh, is betting on fully recovering their team operation capacity in 2022. However, we have another number that match. We have 28% of them said that they expect to have the same thing size or recover the thing size during this year. So as you can see, 28% already hiring, 32% are very positive about uh, maintaining their staffing plan, and 28% hope to have the team size they used to have, they, they had before the pandemic. So there is the correlation about more or less the 30% that I was, uh, that I just mentioned before. The highest staffing peaks, so meaning when companies or the majority of companies will uh, be uh, hiring at a full capacity, because right now we're seeing companies that are a little bit more conservative about the number of people they bring them before, will happen to 2022, when, uh, when, when they predict to be actively hiring and when they predict to recover the full team size. So that's the peak. And this peak um, repeated in the previous survey we conducted, which was in January. So actually that tendency or that expectation has sustained over time in January and also in the April survey. Okay, next slide. Um, so what are the key priorities for the next quarter? So what are recruiters, what are HR people, managers and companies focusing on? Not, it's not a surprise, I don't know if you, if you can read the number, but financial management. No, nothing new here. Of course, they're looking at numbers and trying uh, to stay afloat. Um, and and uh, But something that we saw an increment on and that has become almost, it's just one point difference between financial management with financial management is workforce engagement. And during the panel, I'm sure we will discuss that. What does it mean? Um, the industry left, uh, it, well, um, it's missing many people. It's the people that during the pandemic, of course, needed to find a new job. And those people uh, were, well, companies are struggling. We're seeing some uh, struggles in the US and the UK to get these people back in the industry. So right now the companies, hospitality companies are starting again and, and you know, going back to, to normal. They're struggling a bit to get, uh, to get talent. And so it's no surprise that as a company, once you have someone, when you have a, a great team member, you want to retain that person because it's, it's just very hard to be replaced at the moment. So maybe this is something we will discuss during the during the um, uh, debate. So outlooks, uh, basically highlights. 28% report to be currently hiring, as I said. 28% of employers plan to reach pre-COVID headcount. And remember that 32% are also uh, have a very positive uh, feeling about maintaining their hiring, um, the hiring uh, plans for the rest of the next of the years. Uh, low lights, 51% plan to hire again. This is not a bad number. However, last year, um, the survey conducted in the autumn where the vaccination was just announced, um, 
more than 70% of employers thought that they would recover uh, their staffing, their staff during 2021. So that number lowered down because of course the vaccination perhaps has not been as fast as, as, as maybe people were expecting. And 60% of employers do not expect to reach their pre-COVID uh, team size before 2023. That's a small number where once again, the, the, the expectations to recover the team size has slowly shifted throughout the year. Um, and, and of course, it all depends on how the virus behaves. It all depends on, on the next, uh, well, what happened tomorrow. So that's why we're conducting this survey every quarter to get the most accurate data we have to offer to our employers, to our schools, and to our members. And that's pretty much everything. Uh, hopefully I didn't bore you, and let's start with the Rebecca meeting. Thank you very much, Sandra, for that insight from the hospitality Paul support. Very, very current as such. Okay, I, I would like to open up the discussion now with the development in the UK hospitality industry. Uh, one of the esteemed restaurants in London Le Gavroche, run by chef Michel Rue Jr., last week made a decision to open only for dinner service until further notice, with the restaurant highlighting a major lack of well-trained hospitality staff due to the combination of Brexit and the pandemic. Now, I'd like to start this conversation with Dusty and Sarah, and also Fabrice, if you can put your views on this matter. With the reopening of the industry from the crisis and uncertainty pretty much looming around, are there any adjustments in business models due to the changing consumer behavior with regards to your establishments and how you're uh, facing this? I can ask you to start, Sarah. I can yes. Uh, of course. So we have seen a number of changes in consumer behaviors and a number of things. Some some of the things have affected us uh, positively, actually, while other things, you know, we're looking into how to work with them. Um, so just to give you a little bit of more details, and not just in the UK, but we've seen this worldwide. Uh, in terms of, you know, consumer behavior, we've seen people that are more interested in uh, going to places where, you know, they take care more of the hygiene, where they feel they can trust the brand in terms of security and hygiene. And I see Dusty also uh, nodding. Um, now, if the company can win the trust of its uh, consumers or guests and can provide that, uh, then yes, that supports the company positively and st guests start, um, you know, coming more within that restaurant or that hotel or that brand. Just to give you, you know, some uh, more details on that, for example, uh, when we've opened our hotels in Dubai uh, and Jumeira has uh, received, uh, you know, one of the, or sorry, received an award um, on being, uh, you know, very hygiene. I think the, the uh, first hotel in the world to receive the Biru uh, versus Safeguard uh, Label Award. Uh, you see more people coming to us whether it's for staycation locally or also people who have to travel come to us and they prefer dining within our restaurants so we've seen our restaurants within the hotel busier than usual where previously people like to go out in the city and explore the restaurants we can see people more staying within the hotel and you know dining in um, so we can see consumer behavior changes but we can use it positively to win the trust of our guests and then you know uh, basically uh, using that positively within our hotels and Dusty I see you nodding so I'm not sure if you, you can add or want to add anything to that. No very consistent with what you were saying the consumer today is really looking for um, familiarity as to what they had previously um, here in the U.S. we're seeing a big social boom a lot of social events are happening in gatherings, um, not as many corporate events yet. Um, and so from the perspective here in the US, and I can even say in the UK, you know, people just want to go out. People want to feel some sort of normalcy that they once had before, whatever that normalcy is now today versus what it was before. Um, and as a guest, even myself, you know, I, I go to places where I know as Sarah was saying, that I feel they're taking all the precautions to make sure that I feel safe when I'm dining in their establishment. So, yeah. Uh, Fabrice, any thought on 
Uh, yes, true. Yeah. Yes, and that situation is really uh, different yes, from one place to another. But uh, what we, we can see for sure is the fact of uh, having all safe and uh, was uh, our plan in order yes, to reassure all our guests to be uh, to be coming back to uh, our hotels, to our restaurants. We can see the fact of uh, uh, staycation, yes, uh, visiting. We try to develop as well, yes, the offer in order to have in a closer environment, yes, some um, experience. And uh, it will be for sure as uh, in Europe, yes, for uh, this summer, what will be successful. We hope we guess and we see some reservation about that, that uh, talking also about the non or small opening of borders that uh, persons will go closely for holidays but tourism will pick up definitely the longer uh, trend i would say would be will be about business business uh, uh, habits is something that really we are uh, wondering about how it will be because uh, uh, definitely yes uh, the big events are uh, an issue and uh, we think that the hybrid meetings we are uh, uh, expecting as is something that we have to, to work on. And we have uh, developed, yes, uh, for Accor Hotels, yes, uh, partnership with Microsoft in order to, to develop those meetings in the meeting rooms, to have the possibility to have at each time we have a meeting, some people who are uh, at a distant uh, attendance. And that, that's something will be I'm sure so a trend is yes, for uh, uh, September onward, as well as also we are developing a, a hotel office. Hotel office because we see that, uh, uh, especially yes, in, uh, in Western countries, uh, work from home has been really, really popular. And for uh, office worker, this is something which will come back as a request from the employees. And uh, also maybe not to stay at home. So we are developing in the hotels the possibility to have some uh, uh, working place. Yes, this is in the lobby or there are some business places. So we have some brands about that, which is Wojo, which is Mama Works, which are really a sp specific place. And as well, some rooms which are reallocated in becoming office again and can be rented for a day or for a week or for a month. And we see that uh, persons will want, will want not to have transportation every day to the office, but also uh, not wanting to stay at home be because sometimes it's not comfortable. So those kind of solutions are things which uh, we are yes, uh, having as a train from uh, uh, different behaviors from our uh, guests and uh, for sure, we have to, to be ready for that. And uh, still, we hope we are expecting on a global basis that they will be able to travel still yeah. to have some, uh, some big, big events because we are equipped for huh? all of us. <laughs> so we have question, to. Question about, and, and this is, I mean, for everyone, anyone that wants to take this question about preparation and, and the talent you're hiring and the talent you already have, the team members, how are you preparing them for? guests coming back with more oxygen of course there, there are more as you said hygiene measures and mm -hmm. the social distance how have you prepared your team and how you uh the new people that you're trying to bring on board how you make sure they already know what they have to do with this new normality mm -hmm. so um i don't know i'll answer a little bit of this question and then anyone i mean happy if anyone wants to add but in jamara uh we have a lot of uh, trainings to train our colleagues in terms of you know how to address some of these our housekeepers in terms of how to make sure that the rooms are you know um uh are hygienic for our guests in terms uh you know our, our food and beverage uh can uh, colleagues how they deal you know with uh guests and social distancing um but also in terms of making sure everyone is safe uh we've also had a vaccination drive within the company to make sure that you know the majority or all the eligible uh colleagues who can take the vaccine have been vaccinated them their, their families as well um and this vaccine drive is not just something jamara did but also in dubai i believe 70 percent of our, our population in dubai uh, or the eligible population have been vaccinated so this is a drive that's quite strong in dubai and jamara has taken in that as well um, and, and made sure a lot of our colleagues are vaccinated. So, you know, to make sure that the guests feel, you know, 
uh, safe when coming to our hotels, but also our uh, our colleagues feel safe when uh, supporting our guests. These are just some of the measures that Jamara has taken um, uh, in terms of you know uh, the new things and how to to manage uh, in the pandemic. Okay, I'm just going to jump on to Ragna if it's okay. Thank you, Sarah, for that element of uh, hygiene because there's some questions coming along as well uh, from the attendees about the hygiene safety sample, some of the countries affected like India and Brazil, how they would be affected more in terms of travel and industry as such. But I will come to probably at a later period of time. But before that, would you, Ragna, would you be able to share the activities which world chefs do in terms of setting standards in the industry? Yeah, um, thank you, Nitin. Thank you for that question. And uh, yeah, you, you mentioned uh, set, setting standards for the industry. And it actually comes back to that same question. Uh, uh, how do we attract uh, and retain talent in hospitality industry? Uh, there is an image problem. I mean, before COVID, there was an image problem. And there are different reasons. And, uh, and I guess one of the, the big questions to our industry out there is, when are we going to start investing in our people? And, and uh, we don't have answers to all of those. But definitely within World Chefs, we've been working on those questions of how do we, how do we uh, make skills more visible? And, uh, and how do we uh, show people that, that hospitality, there is a career path. And, and for people that are, that are passionate and motivated, there is, a, there is a strong career path that can lead to a great career. It's not just a summer job that you do for while you're studying. So how do we keep people in the industry? And, and COVID uh, has, has uh, done us a lot of harm in the fact that uh, that, that people have been laid off and uh, and all the work that has been done, we're not sure. And I think a lot of uh, restaurateurs out there are actually panicking a little bit when demands comes up again. How are they going to start recruiting and get that skilled talent all over again? It's actually, uh, I think we need to start thinking more resilience than on a long term. And what, what Wilshire has done, uh, you're right, setting standards is one of our answers to the question. And what we've done is quite unique. Uh, what we've done is that... Uh, we, uh, we created something called Global Hospitality Certification. Global Hospitality is, we, World Chef has taken care of the, uh, the culinary, so Global Culinary Certification. And with our accrediting body, city and guilds, we've created uh, also a recognition system for hospitality, waiters, uh, uh, housekeeping, front office, uh, reception, etc. So it's just, uh, actually, we, what we've done is we, we've, uh, we have uh, created a benchmark uh, for what it means on your different uh, career path from, let's say you come out, out of school, culinary school, a commie chef, uh, a sous chef, chef de cuisine, executive chef, etc. And same for all other uh, 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 careers in the industry. Uh, we set the standards, so we sort of give it a, um, a visibility. What does it mean to be a, a chef de cuisine? What is the standard? What, do you, what are you supposed to know and what are, are you doing uh, as a chef de cuisine? Uh, this is just a sort of a, a first step in order to, to make skills visible and setting standards both for individuals so they are able to showcase their skills, but also for employers to have more transparency and visibility when you're recruiting. Uh, recruiting in, in like, let's say, for instance, in Dubai, because we did have discussion with Dubai government when you have big events like the, uh, uh, big events like the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the World uh, that you're having this year, the World Trade or, or, or the uh, World Trade Expo. World Expo. Thank you. Uh, there's a massive need for skilled workers. So how do you actually uh, make it more transparent of like what level of workers do you need at different levels in industry? So so there are there are many applications for that. So this is what World Trade has been working on. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Ragnar. I just you know quite interesting that we spent almost half an hour right now. It's just kind of bit passed through. Got quite a few things to cover, but I'm just moving on to one of the topics which has been in the in, in the in the spectrum for a few years now, the Brexit and certain other nationalization programs in Gulf countries like emiratization, harmonization, we also Saudi Association. And this has been in the cast for a few years now. With the changing geopolitics around the world, not necessarily restricted to Brexit or other emiratization or any other regional programs within the Gulf region, what are the precautions or actions being taken by operators to mitigate the impact of, uh, in terms of these policies, in terms of recruitment as such? Would you be able to share something? I'll start with this thing, if it's possible. Uh, 
I'm sorry. Um, I, I have to be honest. I think our approach was one way pre-pandemic, and I think we've had to pivot, right? I think there's a huge pivot um, because a lot of uh, EU nationals who were in the UK have left to go home. And so, you know, to be with their families. And so now, you know, we have to build trust in our industry now. So there's there's a, a couple of different avenues that we have to take in order to rebuild that. You know, most people, most hospitality employees were furloughed during this time. So, you know, they've lost a lot, a lot of trust as to job security and job development. So, you know, as a business, we're looking internally on how we can pivot and change the narrative and, and change the conversation. And that's really what I would encourage everyone to do from a business perspective is really try to change the narrative and, 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 and identify ways on how to earn trust back in. You know, through the pandemic, people have had opportunities to learn how to be their own boss, whether that be through social media yeah. avenues, um, or other, or learning new trades because, you know, you've had a year plus in order to, you know, take online courses and, and develop skills that you may not have been able to do before. So uh, I, I don't know if I have a, a, a direct answer on what anyone can do or what the path is. I can say that we are constantly looking at it as a business, as a business, um, daily, weekly, monthly on how we have to re we have to reinvest and build that trust in not only the people that we have, but the people that we've lost. And how do we get those people back over who are eligible to work? Because um, in the UK, you know, to bring a, a worker back from the EU into the UK, depending on what levels, it's it's over seven thousand pounds to sponsor somebody to get a work permit. So that's a that's a pretty heavy investment at the onset. Just Thank you. For, uh, if you think about it, it's true uh, that geopolitics, of course, are uh, playing a role. But uh, hope, yes, hopefully, yes, this is uh, an international uh, uh, international uh, activity, hour of tourism. So when some somewhere there is something which is closing, it is opening somewhere else. Yes, COVID was the first time uh, ever that uh, everything was closed. Huh? From one day to another, we closed 4,000 hotels within Accor. Hopefully, Happily, yes, a uh, few weeks after we could uh, reopen, but uh, today with uh, 260,000 employees, that is true that we can play on mobility, meaning, yes, there is an issue in UK today. We don't know what it will be, yes, in a few weeks and how it will be possible to move, but still, yes, uh, in the in few, well, now we were discussing Dubai is open, so opening new hotels, new properties, and uh, so when we have young talents who want to travel, who want to go internationally, then, okay, Dubai is there. It's okay. We have some uh, points. As an example, Maldives. Maldives wants to develop, yes, uh, strongly, yes, uh, their tourism and, and uh, offer the vaccine. Okay, that's good. We can have some opportunities over there. So, of course, they have to be agile. They have to be open. We too, we have. And uh, as are, there is uh, this thing, yes, we, we can move. We have yes, a big issue, as uh, Ragnar was mentioning, is about the attractivity of our activity. And uh, this, this is a key element, yes, about yes, the constraints like uh, uh, working hours, about uh, weekends, about uh, uh, different shifts, about yes, uh, uh, stressful, about yes, uh, eat about yes uh, sometimes yes uh, uh, no visibility for day after tomorrow and uh, that's something for employers we have the issue and uh, we see it very um, uh, strongly those days with the after covid because we want everybody to come back on board and uh, we some places this is not always the case huh? so we see now um, Usually, usually we hire 80,000 employees per year. Now, a day, we have already reopened uh, 8,000. We have 8,000 uh, positions which are open all over the world within Accor, which is a good thing. I'm happy with it because I'm in charge of uh, finding yes, some uh, uh, positions for uh, young talents. Still, uh, we are not sure to be able to, to be ready for, uh, for summertime, for the different regions. And... Uh, this is something that we have to, to tackle, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I just... 
Sorry, we can say it has been the busiest year for people managers, for HR, for recruiters. You guys have worked yes. intensely. <laughs> Yes, it was. It was quite busy for HR and recruiters during this time. And I'd like to echo what both Fabrice and, and Dusty said. I mean, in terms of what Fabrice said, in terms of mobility, it's it's interesting when you have um, uh, properties around the world that you can sort of, you know, support with that mobility and colleagues moving from one location to another. I mean, during our uh, closure for hotel in Caprice, a lot of, um, a lot of our colleagues uh, came to Dubai, for example. We've seen this also in Dubai in some of our properties where colleagues moved from one property to another to support uh, when one of the properties were, was a little bit busier, for example. Um, so when, when that option is, is available, you see colleagues are more inclined to go and move and, uh, and this also sort of um, supports the, the trust, you know, in, in colleagues that uh, you give them opportunity, you give them task force opportunity for them to move around. Um, I've read a report a couple of days back, I think it was in May, where it said um, the internal recruitment uh, in decreases turnover, but I think about 80% or something. So colleagues see that as an opportunity to move around within, uh, within one company and, and it, it keeps them in because um, it increases the trust uh, between them. So yes, uh, you know, during COVID, uh, we've been affected, um, our colleagues, you know, um, uh, we need to establish more trust within our various communities. We're opening now a hotel in Amman and Saudi Arabia where, you know, Amanization or Saudiization, uh, you know, is required and we need to build trust with the communities uh, there. But I think when people see how much mobility there is and how much there is an opportunity, it sort of builds that trust. Another thing we uh, do at Jumeirah is that we work also with the uh, various government or the government sectors in each region. So, for example, in the UAE, we work with DTCM on graduate programs for UAE nationals here. Uh, similarly, in Oman or in Saudi Arabia, um, where we can sort of have that strong trust between us and um, uh, the community and get then uh, nationals from uh, that that uh, place. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I'm just going to move away to a bit of a digital migration which has happened over the last few years. And uh, Sandra, with reference to Hosco, you're a global platform right now and for recruitment, especially with having very good engagement with various hospitality operators around the world. Would you share with us what Hosco does to promote the needs of hospitality fraternity? Well, I mean, starting with what actually, you know, what, what we are actually, which is, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have the three fundamental pillars of hospitality, starting with talent. And then of course, educational parts with schools like, like the Cordon Bleu and of course companies. So we are, tr we are trying to attack, let's say the three pillars and trying our best to make sure they're always connected and they are aware of what the talent need, what the talent needs, what the hospital, what the employers are seeking, and so schools can also help. Uh, we can also help schools adapt their 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 academic syllabus to what the industry is 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 after. Um, every year, and and sadly this year we cannot have uh, what we call the Hosco Summit, which some of you already know. Fabrice, I think you've been in in almost all editions, <laughs> and in that in in just a few years back, I, I would say edition of number number fourth we started bringing together a schools and companies we wanted them to talk to each other we wanted them to connect with each other because at the end of the day companies of course are looking after skilled qualified talent and that's what schools are bringing to the industry um, usually a person that studies um, let's say in a school once again like the Gordon blue is more engaged with the industry. They, they, it's, they're following their passion. They've been educated about the industry. Um, and so um, this is of course very valuable talent, talent for companies because we are very much aware of the struggles that companies are having. Now with COVID, I think it will, or after COVID, hopefully it's an after COVID, that it, is, it has incremented tremendously the talent shortage. We will see, I think, an increment. But before the industry was already suffering uh, from talent shortage. So, um, and uh, and so the more people we have studying hospitality, the more engaged we will be in the industry, the better and the better talent companies will have. So we're trying to be that middleman, trying to connect all the dots. 
Um, and as you say, we are a global platform. So what we're trying to do is also, of course, bring opportunities to, to members who want to move around because it's a reality that this industry, many people start in this industry because they want to travel. And if you're in a company like a core, like Jumeirah like and like, and of course, like Suma, you can move around because you have different locations. So that's, that's what we're trying to do uh, in a nutshell. Yeah, well, I can second that we have partnered with Hosco to bring the alumni portal to come into life and the students can, once they graduate, they'll be able to access this lovely portal where they can have an access to the amazing jobs right from the early start careers to probably mid, mid to senior management positions. Now, uh, we're talking about connections with the industry. Ragna, how does World Chefs as, as a, as a as a society collaborate with educational institutions and the industry together. I understand you've told about a bit of a city and guild and things like this, but if you can just be a bit more uh, specific on what exactly you do, connecting yeah, the that, industry and institutions. That's right. Education is one of our uh, primary uh, uh, concern and working with the education sector is really uh, uh, crucial for us. And, uh, and uh, again, it was uh, all about uh, helping to set standards within culinary education is where we are coming from and, uh, and because we, we would like to see that uh, uh, that there is a, um, a, a credibility when you come out of a school that that, that you are actually uh, trained in the basics and the employers can ha can be assured that when you come out of a, a, a real school sorry for using the term a real cooking school you will be able to sort of start working from 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 the basics and work your way upward uh, education has become a big business and, and, and there, there are people out there that are not very serious about culinary education. So, so this is so what we want to fight is actually is to keep that maintain that stand in culinary education. And so I, I was mentioning earlier that the, the, glo the global certification. We work with the schools. We, uh, we go in there with our consultants and make sure that they are training towards those global standards. Allows the students to, uh, to travel and, 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 and work in other places to be mobile. And at the same time, we are working with the uh, with the employer side, and, and that, that that is really the key. And and for instance, with Accor Group, where there's a certain Pullman Hotel that is one of our, our recent projects. It's going into that hotel, and what we're doing, we are we are uh, mapping their whole organizational chart of what is what is the role and and job descriptions of every employee within there, and how are they then uh, uh, developed internally in house uh, and gradually moved up in their career. So we map that against our standards, and when, then we then we can certify those workers, and we co-brand that certification. In a sense, we, we are doing something quite uh, innovative uh, in hospitality. We are issuing a digital badge, a digital certification, and the digital certification has these advantages that the employees or the students, when they when they uh, get that accreditation, they can claim their digital badge. They can share this digital badge in their own CV. In their host code profile account or in another other uh, re relevant uh, sources and from there on the, this batch uh, becomes a marketing tool for the employer or the school because they are co-branded and, and we can track and trace how much these badges are being shared or uh, how many impressions or likes or etc so, uh, so this is really how we want to sort of engage the whole industry in, in helping us set these global standards for the benefit of the workers. Thank you. Thank you, Ragna. It's quite evident that we have a skills gap in the industry right now. So I'm just asking probably the, uh, the industry practitioners here, what skills gaps are now identified in the food and beverage areas? And what would you uh, advise the future career seekers to focus on? Uh, may I start with Fabrice? Oh, OK. <laughs> Thank you. So. so <laughs> no, yes, skill gap. I'm not sure because uh, skills to be to be to be taken to be developed. Yes, for sure. But uh, today, well, in FNB, we are we are lacking of uh, of candidates. Huh? So to uh, guys from Le Cordon Bleu, I can encourage them to carry on that way because definitely they will have jobs. They will have good jobs, and we are fighting for getting them on board. Huh? So. Uh, that, that's good. In terms of skills, I would say that what you need is maybe in FNB innovation, but 
I'm sure that the, those good schools are developing this because yes, we had uh, the idea of uh, old cuisine, maybe the French one at a long time ago, and uh, nouvelle cuisine came along, huh, still a few years ago. And nowadays, yes, innovation is everywhere in the world. That is true. So uh, I'm, I was thinking in myself, well, studying uh, cooking in London, this is something new, huh? definitely. Huh? Ten years ago, it was not so obvious. And uh, I saw, yes, with your video and uh, also what is uh, developed in the school that okay yes many many people are coming and we know that the uh, talents in cooking and innovation in cuisine is done in london and is done in many places in the world so yes encouraging and from Le Cordon Bleu, it's easy somewhere to develop, yes, to go abroad, to go outside and uh, and that, that's something definitely in, in FNB. Globally, it would be in terms of skills, yes, digital and also in FNB because, well, how many, how many pictures of food in Instagram? Tell me. It was uh, from Asia. I was living in Asia a few years ago. It was only Asian friends who were doing it. And nowadays, yes, it's full on, 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 uh, on our, yes, uh, on our, uh, p the pictures we receive. Well, there is even a latte and uh, even, uh, yes, something which is not so special, but everything is going. So definitely working in the FNB, you need digital, but digital, which is, is covering many things. It's covering your social media, but it's covering as well, of course, the web, how to, uh, develop yes a website and as well data data is also something which is so important definitely and beside developing the skills which are the soft skills we are telling it for everyone yes in the in the hospitality but those days and even more after this period we will need yes some talents who are eager we can handle the relations, relations with guests and relations with teams. It was something which was making the difference since the beginning of hospitality. But those days we have to learn again. We have to learn again how to manage, how to deal with colleagues and also how to welcome and maybe uh, in a bit warmer way, our guests who need some social relations, social contacts. So those skills are something yes, to, to develop, but I would not say yes about a gap, but I, I say that def definitely yes to, to be to be developed and to be encouraged and to be appreciated by us employers, definitely. And the curiosity still, of course, in our activity, curiosity is so important and uh, uh, contact, making some relations, working on his uh, on his network, on the social network, yes, of course, OSCO, yes, is uh, is the best one, definitely. Where there are so many actors, as Zandra was saying, that meeting meeting on that platform on OSCO with OSCO with the help and with the input, the input of OSCO, and uh, also with the different schools, what's what's going on everywhere. Thank you. Well, you're attracting Fabrice. We are attracting possibly around uh, not only London, uh, Cordon Bleu. But yeah. we do have a, a, a fleet of that, people huh? out in Coming Trento, from many, coming from many places. Huh? Congratulations. Huh? Yes. <laughs> well Thank done. you. Uh, just on to add on to that, uh, any additional soft or hard skills need to be uh, focused by the job seekers to stand out from the crowd. Um, maybe, uh, Dusty and Sarah, if you can just possibly uh, put together your thoughts very briefly. Any additional yes. skills? Yeah, of course. So um, in addition to what Fabrice said, and I, and I agree with what Fabrice said 100%, you know, a number of things he mentioned, which are very important, you know, innovation is always important, not just in FMB, but across all the um, various fields and departments, communication skills is key, uh, you know, whether it's with guests or with teams like Fabrice mentioned, but a couple of other things that we look when uh, trying, you know, to recruit candidates or people into uh, the company. One thing is very important is internal growth. Um, sometimes you see people joining different brands, you know, being an assistant manager at one brand and then moving to another brand as a manager and then to a third brand as a director, but never that internal growth within the same brand. Uh, and I think this is one of the thing that, things that we look at, um, you know, as recruiters when, you know, trying to recruit talents is has the brand really um, believed in that person?
person and rec you know develop that person uh, within the same brand. So uh, this is one of the things that we look at. This is actually one of the advices that I'd like to give uh, students: is that you know have patience and develop yourself within the same brand. It's very important to you know have. Um, within your CV, uh, you know, some strong brands that you've worked on with, or you've worked with, but that internal promotion is quite uh, important for us. So this is one of the things. Um, and the other thing important is, you know, international experience. I know sometimes it's difficult for people to leave their home country and go work uh, abroad, but actually it gives a lot um, of experience to candidates. So, you know, whether they're European candidates working in the US or whether they're, you know, US candidates working in Japan or China, or whether they're, you know, Australian candidates working in the Middle East. It's just that international experience gives uh, a lot um, uh, of knowledge to, to someone. And I'd really advise people to, you know, explore and get out of their comfort zone uh, and travel and get the experience uh, abroad. Thank you, Sarah. Just any final topping? <laughs> uh, Dusty, we can't hear you. Sorry. We can hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I agree with what everybody, what Fabrice and Sarah have said to this point. So I don't want to restate the obvious, but I would, what, what Sarah was saying is, you know, longevity with the company um, and an organization, getting that opportunity to really grow, grow and learn is, is very attractive and, you know, within our business, um, we ha we're very fortunate. You know, we've been around um, for many years and we have people who have been with us for 15 years plus and have started off as a, as a, uh, you know, a steward and now is a head chef and, 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 a, and a development chef and has been, had the opportunity to travel through the variations of the different countries that we're in throughout the different brands. And that is so important. So, you know, uh, really find those opportunities because they're there for you within business, within the business. Um, and, and just, you know, seek to understand and, and, and really be able to utilize your skills to, to grow and develop. Cause there's a lot of opportunities out there for you within a company. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dusty. Uh, we have some questions which came around, but quite a few of them has been answered based on the conversations, what we have been having as well. Uh, but, just one of the topics which has been hot in the market or hot in the hospitality sector is with regards to the workforce, about the work-life balance. And one of the key drivers uh, is this one, which has been identified in many reports. What are you as operators trying to address this important aspect of a work-life balance? Uh, Dusty, I'm just coming back to you again once more. Um, you know, I, I think that you know, that's a very good question. And, and, and as us as a business, we're looking at that in a lot of different areas because work-life balance means different things to different people and different, and different levels. And so, uh, you know, we are looking internally right now as to how we can achieve that and what does that look like? Um, you know, especially again, you know, it was always been, it's always been a topic of conversation pre-COVID and pre-pandemic. And now it's even more, you know, people have, you know, started working from home, they understand what that is. They've had more quality time with their family members and, and that has become more important. So we as a business and, and really us as an industry need to look at, really reflect as to what got us here will not get us there. And we need to be aware of that as, as leaders and how we um, really structure our business going forward. Um, I, I think, we'll be great at it in some aspects and then you know we'll slip and fall in others and i think that that's that's okay um and you know we are going to learn from each other as we go through this next phase of um of what the new normal is uh sarah anything, um, anything stellar which you practice in jumeirah no i think i mean i i agree with the same 
for us as well after you know uh, COVID and what has happened, we've also re-looked at you know how things are uh, you know working with with the company. You know, a lot of our back of office colleagues are still you know some of them are working from home, especially you know mothers who have young children or you know a pregnant woman, for example, who you know it's, it's difficult for them to come to office. So re-looking at the model really and how we can support our colleagues uh, in the best uh, way. I think another thing that we've been doing for quite some time, actually, even before COVID, was supporting um, our colleagues. Uh, so we don't just give them, for example, the leave and try, you know, to give them as much as possible days with their family but also we support with for example voluntary leaves and things for them to you know to be able to give give back to the community and be part of the community um and so we support with a lot of these programs within uh within Jamera as well for the you know uh for our colleagues to to give back to be part of the community community um and also you know uh again have that drive of you know ensuring that our colleagues take the leave go uh, and spend some time with uh, family thank you very much just realizing that we are almost nearing the end of it and the just time just passed like this i know fabrice you have something to just kind of, of mention <laughs> Of course, I will try to be to be short. Sure. Trying, huh? Pr promised. No, it is uh, the question of work-life balance is uh, is a key issue for uh, for us employers, and uh, is really depending of uh, of the regions as well, and uh, and also has um, I would say period of life. And uh, I think the, the answer can be, but it's not easy huh, to really to uh, to to say so uh, to personalize to personalize according to the uh, to 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 the age to the gender to the family situation to uh, the expectation uh, of our uh, employees and meaning because of course we will have to balance the different shifts not having the same having to work all the weekends and such a thing but also as uh, sarah was saying some will need some hours in order to take care of children and to work from home and some others will need dramatically to have more money because uh, they have to to build something and to uh, to develop yes uh, uh, maybe the starting is to uh, to settle down and such a thing so those things are, are to be taken and yes working with solidarity with uh, is something so important and which has been during covid first priority we have developed all artists fund with uh, the shares the sh well we, we didn't uh, uh, give uh, money to our shareholders last year but we spent uh, a fund in order to uh, have the possibility to support our employees being in a difficult uh, situation financially and personally and uh, uh, so yes there, there will be uh, yes uh, uh, there were 70 million which were allocated to that and uh, uh, nearly half of it have been given to our employees and this is something which is uh, also important in order to not only work-life balance but also taking care of the whole situation of our employees i think it is something important for us employers and it's not easy because it's uh, really looking at each situation thank you thank you thank you fabrice now quickly before we wrap future plans of your organizations with regards to recruitment and everything. Very briefly, Ragna, if there's anything which you can share with regards to world chefs adding value to the culinary profession, very briefly. Yeah, no. uh, absolutely, very briefly. briefly. And I think uh, uh, what, what I want to echo what has been said here, and it's really important to hear this from the employer side, is that uh, hospitality has become one of the biggest employers on the planet. And, uh, and it's it, all the uh, the uh, efficiency gain that has come through uh, internet and technology and quicker ovens, etc., have haven't really been invested in the people. So I think in the in the future plans is really to to uh, to help uh, uplifting the skills and invest in the people. And I think also, and I want to thank Hosco and I want to thank uh, Zandra here and the Hosco community, is to work on the community because through this COVID and uh, right. and just mentioned the furlough and the unemployment and difficulty in the in the uh, in the industry talking about mental health and it's been there for ages uh, alcoholism suicide this is also uh, i think a future development for the industry is take care of the community take care of each other so this is i think is a is a brighter future and i think we can we can uh, continue on, on a on a stronger basis after thank you thank you ragna 
Anybody wants to add on a final point here? Zara? Um, I think in, term, in terms of growth, uh, yes, I mean, as a company worldwide, uh, Jamara is opening a number of hotels. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity within the company, but also Dubai, like Ragnar said, is expecting Expo in October this year. And so there's a lot of opportunity here. There's a lot of, you know, the restaurants are opening 100% back. Um, you know, we're recruiting uh, within within Dubai and the UAE. So the company is definitely, you know, it has a, a a bright future. Um, I saw another study that said 20% of jobs in the last decade was in travel and tourism. Uh, I don't think that this would uh, change in the future. I think, you know, um, the roles would still be people would still want to travel, people would still want to go and enjoy themselves. And I think, you know, uh, the opportunities of jobs and growth within um, the industry would uh, only increase. Um, and so I see that, you know, it's, it is a bright future for, uh, for hospitality. Thank you very much indeed. I think the, the time <laughs> is almost come to wrap up this discussion. Um, Sarah, Dristi, Sabriz, Ragna, Sandra, thanks for being part of this wonderful panel. Uh, indeed, a great insight on a global level to understand how the operators like yourself and organizations such as World Chefs are uh, on the forefront dealing with the changing landscape of hospitality. Although it is a small section of hospitality we were discussed here, there are many challenges, opportunities in the wide industry, and hopefully the industry can adapt and make it attractive for the passionate professionals stepping up the career ladders. Thank you all once again, and HOSCO to collaborate on this event, to make it worthwhile. And we look forward to working with you all and also to work with the industry to create the future leaders in wider hospitality. Bye for now and stay safe all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.